my pantry project is on hold. Um, it's we're we're in the middle of the the coronavirus lockdown, and getting granite for the countertop is not an essential function. <laughs> getting paint and primer uh, to paint the cabinet is not an essential function. So those shops are closed. I have a little bit of primer and a little bit of paint spread across a couple of buckets, and so. Um, I've decided to do something else with that in the pantry though so it's kind of staying in the same vein uh, some people collect I don't know made in Occupy Japan figurines uh, Beanie Babies Barbie dolls whatever um, my wife and I don't collect much um, I mean I have a lot of old tools but I use them um, and one of the things that, that we do collect just you know the shmi about the house is Starbucks mugs the uh, you are here so we have, you know, the, the new school, we have the old school, we have the travel mugs. So living abroad um, for five years uh, and then co almost constantly traveling, like at one point I flew about 175,000 miles a year. Um, my wife and I both traveled a lot and in our travels we would pick up a Starbucks mug and it just became a, a cute little thing of, hey, I went to this place and I was in Vancouver and I got you a mug. Um, I was in Alaska and I got you a mug uh, and we would do it for each other and then we realized after we hit about 80 um, it may have been out of hand at this point in our lives we have hundred and nineteen and counting because of that we've run out of storage like completely in their boxes and they're just kind of everywhere and we use them it's not like you know they're they're put up on a shelf to collect dust and we don't use them we use them all the time and Laurel has her favorite one, which is uh, from Mexico City, and I have my favorite. Uh, we just, we want to use all of them. And so I thought while I was doing the pantry, one of the nice things that I could do is build some cup storage. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the math and figure out like how tall and all that and how wide and how many cups I can fit in there. And then I need at least one shelf with the, the travel mugs because we got a bunch of these. Uh, I'm going to make it the same style as the pantry. It'll look like it's always here. And I'm going to do a little storage at the top, either for platters or for uh, for my KLM uh, deft row houses, which is another little problem I have. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's not what this video is about. Uh, so let me go through and, uh, and lay everything out and build it, put it together, and install it. And let's see how it looks. I already had all the lumber and this is actually the bottom detail but uh, I'm gonna put a quarter inch back on it and in order to cut the dados um, I went ahead and put the two side pieces face to face with the backs on either side so that way always the uh, the shelf face lines up on both sides and I went ahead and I cut all the shelves I got one one bigger shelf for like to go coffee cups uh, I went ahead and cut it all with the router with a three quarter inch bit put in it dropped to the same depth as this quarter inch back piece and then used a, a t-square uh, because my dedicated dado cutter is not quite ready now this is the top of it and there'll actually be a one inch uh, laminated piece in here to hold uh, plates and platters but um, I also clamped this down so all the boards are at the same level and then I squeezed them together as well so that the dados themselves would be exactly the same height and uh, meet properly. After I got this marked and cut and then sanded to uh, the final dimension, I'm using this first side to mark out the second side and I'll sneak up on that line too. Uh, it just makes sure that they both match exactly on both the bottom and the top. And then while uh, sanding this on the final sand, I'll just take just to the other side of the line. So that way, um, dimensionally, it'll be exact. So this happens from time to time. And uh, I'm about a sixteenth off on this, uh, this lumber. It's not quite three quarters. So there's a couple things you can do. You can enlarge the cut, um, which if I had a dedicated miter, I probably would, but um, you can also take a little bit off the shelf there um, where it goes in, 
and just cut a rabbit there. But I've got another solution as well. So this is the max width that I can tolerate going into that dado pocket. And this is the current width of my material. As you can see, I'm about 500s off. And that is how it should be. Ha! The glue up for the coffee cup shelves is fairly large, so I enlisted some help. Some very, very attractive, very mostly kind of ish willing help. <laughs> All the shelves are in and they're all flush and the unit is square and my wife was super helpful. It was not, not super fun, but, but we got it. So really wanted to do the back out of a single sheet, but um, I didn't have enough quarter inch ply here and going to a uh, Home Depot or Lowe's right now is not a viable option um, during this pandemic. So I went ahead and spliced two pieces together. Um, once I get the staples in, you, you, you'll never know it's not a single piece. The back is on, and I had just enough staples between the two sizes. I used the smaller staples here um, so that they didn't shoot through. But literally, I got the whole back on. Um, it's all branded, and I ran out right here is I was doubling my last three panels, but they've got a single staple in them and glue, they'll be just fine. So I didn't actually have to use the 18 gauge nails. Pretty happy with that. And then there's the seam. I had to do a little patchwork where I cut the, uh, the dado in order to put the back along the whole edge. And uh, so I just went ahead and filled it with some, some quarter inch poplar. So let me, if glue's dried, let me uh, take the, the tape off and get this nice and nice and smooth. Well, that was harder to do with one hand than I may have thought. Um, so I had to put the camera down, but as you can see, completely smooth. I think it's always supposed to be in that way. I went ahead and puttied all of my nail holes here on the side and while all the joints were nice and tight I still went over everything uh, with a block plane just to make a hundred percent and then I, uh, I put some putty on uh, just to make it nice and smooth uh, a nice perfect transition for uh, for when I primer it now I've got to sand all this down with 110 and then I need to use uh, my scraper and get some of the excess glue off, but also um, in here, uh, in all the corners, actually there's a little bit of glue right there, but in all the corners, uh, get that nice and clean. As you can see, there's a sticker on the plywood I missed. I'm still super tweaked that people put stickers on plywood that you can't get off, so I need to get that off before I prime. Mm. But I think, I think in about an hour, I'll be able to shoot some primer on this. So I actually made a little mistake that I want to show you. I forgot to put the, the plate rail pocket in. And so um, I'm having to do it now before I prime. And what I'm doing is with a half inch round over bit uh, in my trim router, I'm going to use the, uh, the piece itself as my stop and my guide. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in. 
Yeah, I went ahead and did it in um, like three passes because I just didn't want to take the full depth all the way through. But there it is. Plate should sit nicely in there. It's odd, I actually have uh, a lot of these. I have four of these little Makita trim routers that I picked up. Because I have so many of these little little cheap trim routers that are, that are awesome, by the way, um, I can dedicate bits for them. Like I've got a quarter inch roundover bit, and then I've got this 16th roundover bit. Now, I, I really like this little bit, um, and it's not, not cheap, uh, especially with this little tiny bearing. But what it does is it lets me break over the edge on the shelves. Now I could do it with sandpaper, but I really like to hit it with uh, the, just the whole thing, just to break the edge. And then what that does is it keeps the paint from rubbing off on the edge, and it's a little less time in sanding. Um, super quick, super simple, and again, like it's mostly for if I'm doing production work or a, a lot of shelves or something, but it really a time saver in the fact that it's always set up in this little trim router makes life a lot easier. It's not exactly safe to be running a camera and the router at the same time, but, so let me show you the difference. Here's that sharp uh, saw planer edge, and there it is just knocking it off on that 16th, and you can see just takes it right off. And with that little bitty uh, bearing, uh, you can see how it does in the corner. So you still have um, a really nice sharp corner there, but it eases there and there. So uh, again, this the 16th inch router bit trick is is uh, it's it's a time saver and uh, it it I think makes your your finish last longer. Whether you're painting or staining or poly, just not having that that sharp edge uh, to rub over, it, it really really makes the finish last. Everything's sanded, and I've got most of the saw marks and plane marks out of the face frame. And I've got it propped up on saw horses, and I'm going to go ahead and put the first coat of primer uh, here on uh, on the front side. I'm not going to do the back right now. I will paint the back, but just not right now. As you can surmise, I'm out painting in the yard. Um, I don't have a dedicated paint booth. I don't do this as a professional, <laughs> but I am using kilts. I, it's my favorite primer. Uh, it just is. I use Benjamin Moore paint, but I really like kilts as a primer. And then I picked this up, uh, this one specifically last year. I had one before, the model before this. But these little Graco airless like hand uh, rigs, man, they're awesome for little bitty tiny projects. So clean up really quickly, prime easy, easy to paint, quality finish, that sort of thing. So for if I'm painting, if I'm not staining, if I'm painting, uh, I, I really like using the, the little one here for small projects. Quick question, how do you know I'm painting something outside? Answer, storm clouds show up instead of the bright blue skies that were there when I started painting. Look at that, all the primer is good and dry. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a brush and get in all the corners just to edge it and then uh, I'll go ahead and spray the rest. I've mentioned it before, I'm a huge Benjamin Moore paint man. And for all of my trim, I really like the uh, the Advance. Um, now for my house, I actually use a, a satin white it's called Chantilly Lace uh, OC65 is the color, if you want to have it mixed. But uh, it really goes on smooth, doesn't show brush marks, sprays well, brushes well, rolls well, and tough as nails, it really is. This is kind of the tail end of our, our cabinet projects at the house, and I have three buckets uh, of various degrees of empty left of the uh, the advanced paint and uh, as you can see I just barely I just barely have enough to finish this project <laughs> Two coats of paint on, bright, shiny, and white. I've enlisted my wife's help in installing this baby. Um, she's she's doing the heavy work and holding it up. <laughs> And installed so I've got a platter up top in the plate rail just to show you um, there, there'll actually be some cove crown above it so there's a little bit of space and that that detail will be taken care of next but a couple cups to show you and then 
yeah we're we're in um it just needs to be caulked because there's not a square wall in my entire 90 something year old house and the last coat of paint and funny funny thing it's early in the spring and this was outside drying and i've got bits of bits of pollen in the corners that i need to vacuum out so that's the shelf um hopefully i will be able to get back to the other side of the pantry um and be able to prime and paint that really soon um, and then i'll put the last coat of paint on this and get all the cups in their forever home or forever home until we use them put them back use them put them back